Hey, how's it going, everyone? We are the Absolute Geek Podcast. My name is Matt. My name is Kyle. And my name is Corbin. And we're coming to you today live from our individual bunkers. As you all know, this is a, a weird time. We can't all be together for this free comic book day, but we were asked by Ken from Drawn to Comics to kind of participate in a, a digital version of free comic book day. And, you know, we all love comics and talk about them weekly, every Friday night, 7 30 PM on our YouTube channel. And so, uh, we, you know, like I said, we couldn't pass it up to, to help Ken out and to bring you some content on free comic book day, uh, since we all can't be together and hopefully we, we all get through this together and we'll be back celebrating next year. But, I figured we would come to you and kind of just give you a, a little bit of rundown about our free comic book day memories and, and what kind of what free comic book day means to, to us. Do it. Which one of you guys wants to go first? I'll go first. I think my best free comic book day memories, it's, it's at Ken's store. Cause you know, Ken does pretty awesome free comic book day events. And I used to take my nieces, my nephews, my daughter, my son, all of us would go cause everybody would be excited to go. I remember one year, both of my nephews, one dressed up as the Dark Knight and the other one dressed up as Captain America and just walking around and, you know, everybody taking pictures and having a good time and enjoying it with the family is, you know, what's cool about Free Comic Book Day. I agree. I agree. Um, my personal memory on it, or well, my most poignant, I love free comic book day in general to be able to go to comic book stores and have the communication. It's not even really the books for me, although who doesn't love comics It's being able to talk to others and share experiences and have that, that bond that can be made there. In fact, um, meeting you find people and others, uh, the first free comic book day that I really had a pleasure of partaking in as far as, um, being able to share that love with others from a pod perspective was last year at ken's and i was able to meet you both and have a great conversation and i mean all the memories and relationships that formed from that that even gave me the opportunity to be on this show so i will always remember that i remember us doing a massive pod together um that a lot of fun with and i remember that day for a while because i did not want that day to end and i was like we got to meet up again it was just so fun to have that like-minded passion and what free comic book day it does is bring people from different stages of comic fandom whether you're just getting in as you mentioned matt or our experienced comic book reader and you can build these relationships have these conversations and it's a day of unity it's it's deeper than the comics even though it's free comic book day so that was one of my favorite memories i think that i couldn't have said it better myself corbin free comic book day is is just one of those special days where any reader of any level whether like you said just getting into it or you're a lifelong comic fan can come together and participate in this crazy event that gives you free content and, and maybe inspire someone to be the next great Scott Snyder or Neil Adams or Greg Capullo or uh, the list goes on and on. So that's kind of the, the joy of free comic book days. You never know who you're going to inspire. And I like getting together with everyone and, and spending the day hanging out with artists and creators and other podcasters. And we met some great people last year at the podcasting row and people we still keep in contact. One of them, like Corbin said, who's a part of our show now. So you never know what's going to happen at a free comic book day. Um, but to, to close this out again, I didn't want to take too long, but I just wanted to say, tell us a little bit about our show and give our memories, but to close this out, we're going to go ahead and give you an interview that we did with Neil Adams from Phoenix fan fusion last summer. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, if you enjoy the interview, make sure to check us out every Friday night, 730 p.m. Arizona time on YouTube at YouTube.com forward slash Absolute Geek Podcast. And so we'll go ahead and kick it off to Brian, Ken and Neil Adams. Good, good day. Have fun. Have fun, guys. Enjoy your All free right. comic book day. <laughs> Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the uh, Phoenix Comic Fan Fusion Comic Con event that's going on right now here in Phoenix. And um, yes, we are. We're very lucky uh, to have uh, both Ken Brown and Neil Adams here. And I want to thank Ken Brown for making this possible. I really appreciate it. You've been uh, um, really uh, front and center here at this con, in my opinion, and it's it's really good for our local scene. And, and I he's appreciate telling it. Telling everybody about these great frames that the people, the people here that sell these frames that have extended comic book covers. And look fantastic. Yeah, people ought to try to find out. I don't even know if they have a, a, web, a website or whatever. But people, if you get to see this stuff, it's really yeah. fantastic. You should try to. Do you know if they have a website? Not yet. I think they're working on it. I was talking. 
talking about? Like that, hey, what, how do I find you on the website? Yeah. Yeah. Instagram yeah. right now is the best way to that. find him. He's doing some great work. I, basically, he takes a comic book, puts a frame around it, and then he extends the artwork, whether, the, whether it's the special effects or a decorator thing, out past it by using a, a mat knives or a special tools where he extends the artwork and makes it into something even yeah. more fantastic. I agree 100% with getting some of these things out of the comic boxes and getting them displayed. Um, enjoy them. Um, uh, if you're not reading them, enjoy them. Put them on the wall there's for the always, art. There's always something new to, to... I mean, we have a metal cover at, at our table that people are just going ape over because it looks like porcelain. It's yeah. not like metal at all. It's like porcelain. Yeah. So you start putting these things together and you realize that more and more products are coming out, more and more things are coming out. You don't necessarily have to put posters all over your wall. You might have some really nice frameable items for people to come over, when they come over to your house to go, oh my God, that's yeah. wonderful. It's yeah. beautiful. So keep your eye out for these things. Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, I'm, I'm definitely one to, to get this artwork out and, and, and pe for people to enjoy it. Um, well, I'm not dragging you through this, this particular thing. What yeah. you move on? No, 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 no. I was actually going to get into how I've, I've learned that uh, this stuff is much, much... Uh, you enjoy it more when you're able to talk, show it to friends and enjoy it. And I've, I've covered one complete wall from floor to ceiling in artwork. So your house can express an opinion. Even if they don't like it, it's something to talk about. And, you know, conversation starters and conversation builders are really what it's all about. It keeps us from the internet a little bit. Well, w one of the things that I want to talk about on my wall um, real fast is this cover. And it's a, a cover... Green, green, green Arrow with the drug issue? Yes. My goodness. And it's it's a very important piece of art on my wall, as um, I was lucky to have both you and Danny O'Neill, the great Danny O'Neill, sign this piece for me um, a while back. And um, I'm very open with this fact that uh, I'm a recovering drug addict. I was a uh, heroin addict for 10 years. I'm 15 years sober right now. Um, and I've made it a part of my life to help people who are going through the same type of thing. And being a comic fan, and, and a, more importantly, a fan of your work, this book has, and this cover, and not just, just this cover, but the whole book, everything about this storyline, everything, has become a piece that I like to talk to with their family members. When their family members don't know what an addict is going through, it's very hard for them to look at them in a way other than as an addict. And I think that this storyline is a very important storyline to show that all people who are struggling aren't bad people. This is uh, this uh, this story has a genesis uh, in, in, uh, in New York. Uh, the mayor, who I was John Lindsay at the time, uh, very nice mayor, very good mayor, uh, was looking for, uh, he and the city government was looking for um, uh, some way to, to produce a comic book that talked about drug addiction. And so they essentially offered, uh, offered it to people at DC Comics to write something. So the question was, who's you know who's going to do it? I, I opted, to, I volunteered. Danny O'Neill volunteered to write an outline. In 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 uh, in, in doing this, uh, we took advantage of the city to introduce us to Phoenix House. You know something about Phoenix House? Uh, very very big in New York and other some of the other drug addiction houses. And so we were given the opportunity to go there and to talk to uh, some of the uh, people who were working in the program. Uh, of course, we learned th certain things, things that other people don't necessarily know, like, uh, and we got to ask questions. And one of the questions that we asked, which sort of started the whole, the whole conversation off, was, oh, we hear that uh, pot doesn't lead to heroin addiction. And everybody in the room laughed at us. They said... Of course it does. What are you talking about? Pot leads to heroin addiction like crazy. If you're going to do pot, eventually you're probably going to do heroin unless you save yourself or you go in another direction or whatever. You get a really good job, whatever it is. But you know what? 
nobody here who, do, who does heroin didn't do pot right. to begin with. You're probably right. Yeah. And they and they and they and so we said, I guess we have a few things to learn here. So we we spent a couple of days at the Phoenix House talking to people, having these sessions. And uh, so we put, we went away and we did our outlines that we presented to the to the city. They immediately rejected them because in those days. <laughs> It was, you know, just say no. Just, just, just say no. Yeah. It was all on. The, it was all on the addict, you know, to say, oh, you got to refuse this stuff. And it's like, what the hell are you talking about? So Denny and I very clearly left with the same message. It's not the addict that the problem is. It's everybody around him. It's the world around him. It's dad coming home uh, at the end of a day, and he takes two shots of uh, scotch and sits in front of the television and puts his feet up and, you know, wants to be waited on. you got to give him the newspaper. And you come home from school, and you've got three more hours of homework to do, and you fucking hate the teacher, and you just want to, you know, want a little relief, and dad is sitting there. Maybe you want to talk to your dad. And he's not talking to you. He's watching the TV. Yeah, watching the news. He's smoking his cigar. He's drinking his booze, and he's reading the paper, and he doesn't care about you, you know? It's not that he doesn't care. He just doesn't have the energy left to care. But guess what? You don't have the energy either. So it's just bad for you, and you're not being paid. <laughs> you, know, you got no salary check to show that you know that you did the work, and you got still three more hours of work to do, and you got nothing in the community to distract you. And where is the community when it comes yes. to this shit? And guess what? He's down a very bad path because you're ignoring him. So it isn't just say no. It's fucking come up with some solutions in the community for people to have something to do that takes them away from the bad stuff and takes them onto the good stuff. So, of course, Denny O'Neill, it was very clear to Denny and I that this was the case, but and we wrote it up, and of course, they didn't like it. They didn't like that. No, no, we don't want to do that, so screw that. So that program went to hell. So we, 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 we kind of let it go. But we were, so we were doing a, a Green Lantern, Green Arrow, and, and, and we're coming to the end. Denny wrote a, Denny wrote a story about overpopulation. And I thought, this is going to end. <laughs> we're, we're, we're down to overpopulation. We're going to say goodbye to the series. And I thought, ah, we, got, we still have a couple of things to finish off. i got to have a black superhero who, doesn't, who has a job, who graduated college, and who has a, and has a profession. And it's not some gangbanger that suddenly gets hit by lightning and turns into a superhero. I gotta have that, and I gotta deal with drug addiction. I gotta do that cover. So I did. I went home and I did that cover. You don't actually have to hire Danny O'Neill to do that story. You just give any writer that cover and say, write that story. It's already there. It's in the cover. You look at that cover and you go, oh shit, that's it. So. I don't think Denny had a hard time because he was on the same page I was. So we went ahead and, and of course, the, the, my editor said, huh, no, dropped it like a hot potato. He said, not in that, Neil. I'm not, only, not only am I never going to publish this cover, but we're never going to publish this cover. I'm never going to pay you for it. I said, I think you are. If there's anybody that you don't want to say that to, it's yeah, Neil Adams. Don't want to be saying that. <laughs> so Stan over at Marvel, right? He did this story with uh, Harry Osborne. Harry Osborne, getting pill pop, who popped pills and well, I guess walked off, walked off the roof or some shit. Yeah. Now let me tell you how much Stan Lee knew about drug addiction. <laughs> Usually, and, and <laughs> what pills? Exactly what pills are we talking about here? Excuse me. Yeah. Don't we have to know what kind of pills? Because yeah. most guys. Most pills, well, they'll, you basically go sit in the corner and go quietly like this. You just shh, shh, get away from me. Just get away from, get away from me. You're not going to be walking out a window because that's going to really, that's paranoia. Yeah. Uh, but Stan, I guess, had read an article about somebody who walked off a roof or whatever the hell it was, and he, he put it he put it in the story. I talked, I'm talking to Johnny Romita, who did the story, right? And he said, I said, uh, and Johnny pulled me over to the side. Now, I had had that cover on Julie Schwartz's desk for three months. Wow. They weren't doing anything with it. Just leave it there. Everybody that looked at it was terrified. I'm talking to Johnny Romita, and he's saying, this is what Stan did. He did this thing. And I said, well, well, did you send it to the code? He said, yeah, we sent it to the code. They rejected it. 
So, I said, so what happened? He said, well, Stan went to his uncle, the, uh, Martin Goodman, yes. and said, I'd like to run the, uh, I'd run, like to run the book without the code seal. <laughs> Martin said, sure, go ahead. That's awesome. I said, so you ran it? He said, yeah, we ran it. It's been, it's been published. I think that it's was the shipping. first it's uncoded shipping. comic in history. It's right? shipping. It's shipping. So anyway, I go back next week, right? Next week. And I go see Johnny. I say, what happened? What happened, dude? What happened? What happened? And Johnny said, nothing. <laughs> said, nothing happened. I said, nothing? He said, nobody noticed. I said, really? Nobody noticed? I mean, didn't, no letters, no phone calls? No, nobody noticed. They didn't even notice the seal wasn't there. Nobody in the United States of America noticed that the seal wasn't there or gave a crap. Or gave a crap. Oh, so I go back to DC Comics. Everybody's running around the hallways. They're going nuts. Stan beat him again. Bad enough he stole Captain Marvel. Double down. That takes us to another just real quick thing I want to talk about, and that is your crusade to... I don't have crusades. Well, I smile. Yeah, Neil, you really did I do a lot uh, for a lot of these yeah, creators. Whatever. And one of the things that I noticed a lot is, what well, we've all noticed, especially in the last 20 years, 15 years, is the a lot of creators now have um, donation centers. Um, and they're taking donations to set up payment for the hero initiative. And I really think that you, along with a couple other people, we're doing that before the Hero Initiative. Well, you got to understand that the, that the Hero Initiative sort of came out of, okay, let's give Neil a break. Yes. <laughs> it's good. Neil's done enough. You know, maybe we ought to start, you know, we'll, before we form an organization. So they formed an organization, basically took on my job, which that, that was good because I don't have to do that anymore. Now I can take more unique problems and take care of, like the Dina Babbitt thing and other things. So... It led to, I mean, it led to it. I, you know, once you do it, once you establish it, this is what we do. We take care of our own. Then everybody sits down and they, you know, people will sit down and go, why don't we do, why don't we turn, the, make it official, turn it into an organization, and make it into something, because clearly it's right. Yes. Clearly Neil proved yes. it and showed us the pathway, so let's just follow the path and let's do it. So now you have the Heroes Initiative. It's a, it's a logical evolutionary process that was meant to happen. But you do have to kick it off. Yeah. And so I kicked it off. That that was my job, yeah. sort of. You know, and, and it worked. Now we have the Heroes Initiative. Now we ought to have you know mandatory medical insurance for everybody. Yes. We, we miss, we're missing a bunch of high points. Yes. And we ought to have it. But uh, it'll happen. It'll happen. One of the things that you talk I might sneak that one in there. Uh, uh, one of the things that you've brought up a couple times that, and that's community. The as, as, aspect of community and how we look after our own. And, 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 and you know, the whole community needs to raise. You know, it's, it's true of the human race, isn't it? Yes, pretty much. I mean, uh, I mean, that's one of the, look at not doing it brought us Donald Trump. Yes, you're 100% right. Not doing, not looking at for the community. 40% of the electorate, uh, the, the uh, Democrats and the independents, 40% yeah. didn't vote. That's how we got Donald Trump, because they were too lazy to do their job. And when you don't do your job and you think somebody else is going to do it, you know, you end up with something like Donald Trump. So you've got to do it. And that, if there's a message in any of this, you got to get off your ass and do it. Do your job. Minimum vote. Minimum vote. Send in money to your to your party or whatever it is. Independents are great. You know the good thing about the independent non-party is it's great. You don't have to be anything. You can just like vote the way you want and just be an independent. They'll mark you down that way and then you vote for the good guy. Sometimes I wish they would just get rid of the whole party system. We have I, it, it, You have to come up with a replacement. Yeah. So I'm very passionate about that topic too because I think along the line over the years America got more or less so sexualized of wanting to be policy oriented rather than people oriented. Well, I, when you go I think back that's, to being, a, that's a little too easy to say. Uh, okay. I mean, policy is people. <laughs> but like, because there's, policy but they only affects about people. Lobbyists and stuff like that where how am I going to get my funding to get into office? Well, that's a different subject. Okay. Yeah, you're talking about lobbyists. Lobbyists, lobbyists are a reality are, are a reality that we have to deal with because we are lobbyists. Yes. Necessary. Okay. We are there. We are the same people. We put in 
our money or we don't put in our money. And the people look for our support. And sometimes they look for our support in little donations or big donations or whatever. And we have to worry about the guys who are donating money for bad causes and for things that we shouldn't be. I believe I don't believe in gun control, but I do believe in gun control for automatic and semi-automatic weapons. And I do believe that they ought to be monitored and there ought to be a test for guns and you and these rifle ranges and these gun ranges ought to be taken care of. And there should be rules about hunting. But there are some, but there aren't enough in enough places. The gun control isn't like, let's just get rid of guns. No. We, we, in America, we want guns. Gun control is control. Yes. It's not gun throw them away. It's gun control. Hey, too much. A little too much. The loopies got the guns. <laughs> There's too many loopies. It's, it's also very important. Yes. You can, you can run into households where people say, no, we're in control of our guns. We do this, we do this, we everything is locked up. And you'll up. never know. And it's true, and it's true, but those people never have a voice because they're doing it the right way. It's, the, it's, it's that we haven't trimmed the edges off and taken care of the, you know, the loopies. And so they, they go out and they go crazy. Yeah. So we, yeah, there needs to be gun control, not gun throw it away. Yes. Well, um, a couple years ago, I read an article where you were talking about um, how you, one of your ideas, one of your thoughts was to um, create a world comic book center in New York where the comic district was. I think it's a good idea. I, I do too. I think it's a great idea. I think that New York is the heart of our industry and, 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 everything, and everything that comes along with it, especially what you guys were doing early on. Well, I think it's going to happen by the nature. I mean, sort of announcing it lets puts, plants the uh, idea in people's ears. And uh, very often I accomplish a lot of things by planting ideas in people's ears because they haven't thought of it before. But now that you're thinking about it, let me see what's there. We've got all the Disney movies, all the uh, Star Trek movies, all the, all, the, all the great movies come out on 42nd Street in these really new upgraded theaters. Everybody in New York from every race and every creed comes to Times Square because the subway goes there. Yes. So you got Puerto Rican, Asian, Black. Everybody comes comes there. It's a mix. Even the white people are starting to come back because they're not par paranoid anymore. <laughs> then you have uh, uh, Midtown Comics, which is the, one of the biggest comic stores in the country, which is a really great store. We have our gallery, which is on uh, 39th Street. We have Metropolis Gallery, which is a block away, two blocks away. And maybe other people will come there. And there is a place, there is a, a thing where you kind of have to say, where do we want to go? Where is this all happening? And where do we want to plant our next flag? I don't know what the next flag is. I have no idea. I, I would love to see a Frank Miller, Jim Lee gallery, or even the Frank Miller gallery. I'd love to see a you know, Marvel gallery or a DC gallery. I'd love to see independent you know, agents who represent... Uh, Guys like uh, 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 Frank Miller and the other guys set up a gallery type situation where they're selling the stuff at good prices, at realistic art, artsy fartsy prices. Yeah, because it is that. It is. It's art. It's turning into. I mean, I hate to admit it. <laughs> uh, but the 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 idea of, of the next person that does that, because we I've already announced it. Okay. The next person that does that is going to make it an establishment because I've announced it and then somebody will go in and go boom and I'm doing it and then suddenly everybody will go oh my god yeah let's let's do it too what's wrong with that let me just say, let me just say this I would love to believe that the that the that art is always great okay but it's not great you can go to a, a museum of art please enjoy you go to a museum of art, of old art, you know, these giant paintings and, you know, Roman columns and all the rest of that shit, and you go in there and, the, and you look at this stuff, and the first thing, word that comes into your mind is, this is boring. This is boring. I am so bored with this, but I know I'm supposed to like it, because everybody tells me I'm supposed to like it, but it's boring. It's boring. Well, why is it boring? Because the subject matter is boring. One, two... 
they had the when they painted they painted people who stood still for the painting for five or six hours or more so they couldn't have an action there was no action poses there was nothing really interesting look at this Batman piece right here this thing in the desert you can't even hold those poses for five hours but now we have it and now we have our best artists not, just, not me I'm talking about a lot of great artists are doing very exciting art that you go to see because you want to see it not because somebody drags you and says this is what art is because it's not what art is art is the very best we can do today and so real art is the future it's not the past that's just how you got there the steps you got to get there and most of it is boring art is this last avengers movie really you know it's like that's art to me all that stuff is fantastic so we're moving into a time that you know people who might say oh this is comic books i have to say you know that's what you used to say about commercial art and then you got norman rockwell and then you got bob peak then you got uh bernie fuchs and austin briggs and al parker and then and then you got uh the best commercial art. Hey guys, Matt here. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but this is where this interview ends. As Neil got busy with people at his table and he asked that we cut the interview short, I do have his people's contact information and we'll be in contact with them here in the near future to hopefully be able to sit down with Neil and get another interview at a later date. I just want to take this time to get once again thank Neil Adams for sitting down with us. He didn't have to do that. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you, Ken Brown from Drawn to Comics in Glendale, Arizona, for hooking us up with this interview over the weekend. Again, we greatly appreciate it. And guys i hope you enjoyed the interview for for what it was and you got a little something out of it and maybe a little bit of insight into the business and um until next time